Hello everyone. Hello students. Welcome back to another session from fourth module, the RBI, Reserve Bank of India. The Reserve Bank of India Act was passed in 1934 and the bank started working on April 1st, 1935. The Reserve Bank was set up as a shareholder's bank with a share capital of Rs 5 crore. In the beginning, it was held by the private shareholders in 1949. The Government of India nationalized RBI by the acquisition of all shares by the government through the payment of compensation to the shareholders. The RBI as the central bank of the country is the center of the financial and monetary system. It is also known as the apex institution which guides monitors, regulates, controls, and promotes Indian financial system. Now let's check some of the famous economists' comments about the central bank of a country. They are Samuelson, Vera Smith, and Sayers. All are economists. The key roles of RBI includes 1. As the regulator and supervisor of the financial system of India, controls the exchange, that is the foreign exchange, it issue currency, it acts as a banker to the government and also maintain the accounts of all the banks which work under it. Now it's time to analyze the structure of the Indian banking system. Now let us check the organizational structure of banks in India. The RBI is a supreme monetary and banking authority in the country and has the responsibility to control the banking system in the country. As the Apex Bank, there are several types of banks comes under the RBI. They are the commercial banks, cooperative banks and development banks. Under commercial banks, we have public sector and private sector. And uh, further classification of public sector includes SBI Group, Nationalized Bank and RRBs. State Bank of India and its associates come under the Apex Bank RBI and RBI owns the majority share of SBI and associate banks of SBI. Nationalized banks are wholly owned by the government and some of them have made public issues that is shares, example Corporation Bank, Bank of Baroda, etc. The third category is RRB or the Regional Rural Banks. The Government of India set up RRB on October 2nd, 1975 to provide credit to the weaker session of the rural areas, particularly the small and the marginal farmers. The private sector bank is owned by the shareholders. It consists of old generation private banks. Example. Old generation private banks. Example, Union Bank, Danalakshmi Bank, etc. The second category is cooperative bank. And it consists of state cooperatives, central cooperative, primary agricultural credit societies, land development bank, and state 
land development banks. They are governed by the Banking Regulation Act 1949 and Cooperative Societies Act 1965. And the third category, they are called the development banks. They mostly provide long-term finance for industries. They also provide short-term finance for export and import activities. They provide finance to both private and public sector. Examples of development banks are IFCI, ICFI, the Industrial Finance Corporation of India, IDBI, the Industrial Development Bank of India, SIDB, Small Industries Development Bank of India, and NABAD, the National Bank for Agriculture and Rural Development. Now it's time to move on to the functions of RPI. The first function of RBI is the Bank of Issue. The RBI is the sole authority for issuing currency in the country. All kinds of currency other than 1 rupee coin and notes are issued by the bank. The 1 rupee coin and notes are issued by the Ministry of Finance. RBI works through two departments, the Issue Department and the Banking Department. Issue Department issues currency and all other banking functions are done by the Banking Department. In the case of issue of notes, RBI follows the principle of minimum reserve system. According to this system, a bank keeps a minimum reserve of rupees 200 crore for gold and foreign securities, out of which gold alone must be the value of rupees 150 crore. The second function is banker to the government. Is the second important function of RBI is to act as the government banker, agent and advisor. The RBI is the agent of central government and all state governments in India except Jammu and Kashmir. Maintaining the accounts of central and state government, collection of payments to the state and central government, making payments on behalf of the central government and state government, managing public debt, advising central and state government on financial matters, and giving advice to the government policies concerning banking. These are some of the function as banker to the government. The third one is Banker's Bank. RBI act as Banker's Bank in four capacities. Firstly, custodian of cash reserve of commercial banks. Secondly, no bank can function without a license from RBI. Third, it act as the lender of the last resort. The fourth function is the controller of credit. The function as controller of credit. It means the regulation of the creation and contraction of credit in the economy. It has the power to influence the volume of credit created by banks in India. There are qualitative and quantitative credit control measures. Before moving to the quantitative and qualitative method, let us go through the monetary and fiscal policies. The monetary policy is the policy of RBI. 
to ensure price stability for the economy. This include money supply, interest rate, etc. We have already learned what is M3. You have the detailed notes of M1, M2 and M3. If you ask what is the basic difference between monetary policy and fiscal policy, the first one, monetary policy is a policy of the central bank of a country and fiscal policy, the policy of the government. The monetary policy regulates the supply of money in the economy, whereas the fiscal policy can be used to overcome recession and control inflation. It can be a deliberate change in the government revenue and expenditure. Major objectives of monetary policies are price stability, stability of the foreign exchange rate, economic growth, stabilization of the money market. Now, in India, the money market is a part of financial market which is in the borrowing and lending of short-term loans, generally for a period of less than or equal to one year. And the last one is to meet the needs of business. Now let us go through some of the instruments of monetary policy, especially the quantitative methods. The first one is the bank rate, second the cash reserve ratio, third the SLR, fourth OMO, fifth the margin requirements, sixth the deficit financing and the last one issue of new currency. The bank rate is the interest rate which is fixed by the RBI to control the lending capacity of the commercial banks. During inflation, RBI increases the bank rate and vice versa during the deflation. The second one is a cash reserve ratio or the CRR. The current CRR in India is 4%. Next is the statutory liquidity ratio or the SLR. The SLR refers to the percentage of reserves to be maintained in the form of gold or securities. The current SLR is 18.25%. Open Market Operations or OMO. It refers to the buying and selling of government securities in the open market. During the period of inflation, RBI issues government securities to the commercial banks for which they have to pay to RBI resulting in the limitation of funds and they cannot lend further. Thus, money supply is controlled in the economy. Deficit financing means printing of new currency notes by the RBI. During inflation, RBI will stop printing new currency notes, thereby controlling inflation. Issue of new currency. During inflation, RBI will issue new currency replacing the old ones. Next is a repo rate. 
Repo rate is the rate at which a banks borrow currency from the central bank. The present repo rate is 5.15 percentage. The reverse repo. The reverse repo rates will also contract the credit as the commercial banks are more inclined to deposit their funds with RBI. Depositing more funds by commercial banks with RBI reduces their loan giving capacity. The present reverse repo rate is 4.90%. points to remember. The repo rate is always higher than the reverse repo rate. Repo rate is a short term measure and the bank rate is a long term measure of RPI. Moving on to qualitative or selective methods. The qualitative or selective credit control measures include selective credit control, credit squeeze policy, variation of the margin, moral persuasion, direct action, etc. In the case of selective credit control, the bank ensures that the credit money is going into the deserving hands. In credit squeeze policy, it acts as an anti-inflationary measure. Moral persuasion is that RBI morally persuades the commercial bank to work in the interest of the national prosperity and economic growth. Whereas in direct action, RBI is empowered to initiate action against those commercial banks which ignore its advice. Control of bank advances is also used as a selective credit control. Variation of margin requirements include the change of the margin. The margin is the difference between the loan and the market value of securities. If the central bank prescribes the margin requirement as 40%, then the commercial bank can lend only 60%. If the RBI increases the margin to 50% then the bank can lend only 50% of the market value. Thus, by changing the margin requirements of the amount of loan made by the bank can be changed in accordance with the policy of the central government. To know more about margin requirements, during inflation, RBI fixes a high rate of margin on the securities kept by the public for loans. If the margin increases, the commercial bank will have less amount of credit. This is how the margin requirement works. Fiscal policy is the policy of the government generally used during recession and maintain economic stability in the country. These are some of the instruments of fiscal policy that is reduction of the government expenditure, increase in taxation, imposition of new taxes, wage control, rationing, etc. Other measures include increase in imports of raw materials, decrease in exports, increase in productivity, use of the latest technology, and a rationalized industrial policy. And thank you for listening this class patiently. Thank you so much.